Mr. Patrice, we've got major problems. Perhaps I should send some accountants. A pact! You already sent me an accountant! Perhaps you should calm yourself, Salvatore. You're lucky to get the 5%. Do it today, or Patrice will have to send some people to do it for you. I am the Paisley Eyed Death Stalker. I walk on the air! Pull everybody off the street! Now! Numbers, guys! Bag men! We gotta rumble! Everybody! It's not even complicated. DeMont is working our territory, and the deal we have with him is substandard, yes? 5%? The next thing you know, we're getting complaints from partners who are stepping up for the whole 15%. Now, what should we tell them, Sonny? Should we say we're doing it because he's tougher than we are, yes? No, Sid, that's not what we tell them. What we tell them is to mind their own business, otherwise we're gonna start cracking heads. You don't know what we go through down there with Cecil DeMont. It's like doing business on the moon. Patrice wants you to try harder. Now, he's talked to me about it, and I said I'd clean it up. You gonna do that from your phone booth at the athletic club? Excuse me, sir, but uh, Lorenzo's clothes just got here. They came by air freight. What do you want me to do with them? Leave it here, sweetheart. I haven't figured out where to park the kid yet. Do it today, or Patrice will have to send some people to do it for you. Chance to give you a bat. Uh oh. The room. Okay, come on, kids. He can't do this. Please. I'll get back at you for this. Oh, yeah, what are you gonna do, Pete? Tell mom? Yeah, tell mom. Oh, it's hard to believe you two are brothers. Yeah, I admit it is kind of hard to believe with uh, Pete losing his hair and his physique and everything and me holding up so well. Well, not holding up well. Okay, who's your next drawer up there? Come uh, on, hey! You and your brother are very close, aren't you? Yeah, we're close. You used to hear my secrets. Now he hears my confessions. It's pretty much the same thing. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Why do you work over at that hotel? Yeah, it's a job, you know. It pays pretty good. Beats pushing a hack or busting tables. My mom showed me this article about Mr. Steelgrave. They said that he's like some underworld boss and that... Look, Vinny, it's just been a long time for me. You know, after Alex, I just can't make that mistake with you. I just can't. Hey, Gina, Mr. Steelgrave owns a hotel. I work at the hotel. I do dumb stuff. Do stuff <laughs> like, uh, check how much lettuce there is on Cobb Salad Day. How much veal on real piccata day. Stuff like that. I like to in, in charge some of the vendors, that's all. All right? All right. Good, I eat. 
almost great all the fathers getting in the dunk like that, huh? Yes, Monsignor Vintelli had a hard night thinking on that before he <laughs> said yes. <laughs> Vinny, you kind of like Gina Augustina, huh? Yes, Father Taranova, I kind of like Gina Augustina. She told me you were taking her out again tonight. Don't make a mistake, Vinny. Not with her, okay? Look, Pete, I really like her. I'm not gonna hurt her. She's kind of like walking wounded. After Alex, she spent most of her time just staying home. Finally, she started coming here. It's been two years getting her to where she is. Come on, Pete. I'm just telling you, okay? She's been hurt. She's very special. And you're packing more than your share of backstory. So don't make a mistake, okay? Okay. See you later. What the hell's in here? It smells like dog shampoo. <laughs> That's Lorenzo's stuff. I had the boys bring it up to your place till I figure out where to park the kid. You know, I got an extra bedroom. You can put him in here if you want. You don't mind? Yeah, it's only for the summer, Vinny. Sonny, come on. You didn't tote this thing up here just to let it perfume my living room. <laughs> OK, you got me. I was hoping you'd be generous. As usual, you didn't disappoint me. Oof. There's got to be a bottle of broken cologne in here. You know how these gindaloons are from Sicily? They bathe in this junk. <laughs> mm. Oh, boy, I haven't seen Lorenzo since he was five, maybe six years old. I was his big, tough 16-year-old uncle. Kid cried when his old man got deported back to Palermo. <laughs> he was a Yankee fan. Yeah. yeah. yeah like the Flintstones. He was an all-American boy. He gets in at 5.30. So maybe you want to come down here with me. We pick him up. We'll take him out to dinner after the Cecil DeMonte. Uh, I can't, son. I got a thing out there. Hmm? Gina Augustina, right? We'll take her with. Oh, son, she's a neighborhood girl. Hey, Vinny, is it me? No, oh, son, it's not you. Because I'll be nice. I'll be Uncle Sonny. There'll be no wise talk. Everything will be nice. Let me think about it, OK? What time is this Cecil DeMont thing? 4.30. It's a mistake, you know. Mm. I know. We're meeting him at a rib joint called Backstreet. We're not looking for nothing but talk, but I want you to watch my back, Vinny. OK? This guy's got heavy muscle, and they're all not wrapped too tight in the head. I don't know what DeMont feeds them, but it's causing brain damage. Be right there with you, son. If these Moulinians so much as shift their weight, I want you to start pumping. You go for DeMont first. You got it, son. They come this way, two machines. And there's a bean shop over on the left. Let's go around. I want to cruise the whole block. All right, now, this is Jackson on the inside. They're going around. Y'all stay alert. We'll be ready, Mr. Jackson. We're going to be seeing a lot of cops around here once we open up season. Yeah, I know that's a fact. The cops love to see Mr. Steelgrave lying face down with his eyes looking up, staring at the inside of his pointy head. You know, they're probably going to give us a party. Going to make it Cecil DeMont Day. <laughs> Nobody on the streets with nowhere to park, except over there. I don't know, Sonny, I don't like it. Stay alert, you guys. 